Let's work on the French Linen Botanical Journal. Hello and welcome to the treasured page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. And I'm having a look inside the journal. You will see that I still haven't got my folio fitted. And that is because I want to work on that this evening. So here we have the folio. And at the moment I'm just securing some lace onto the inside panel of this flip so that that is a belly band there which will house my pressed flowers in the folded folio that I made out of tissue paper. So this was packaging paper that you get from a gift shop when they wrap something and then it's either discarded. I've used that to make my pressed flower holder here and the little pockets you can see for adding pressed flowers. And I can report now that the flower press that I use, the micro fleur, hasn't aged the, the botanical samples. They are the same colour as the day that I dried them and they are brittle and fragile and very, very beautiful. So I'm wanting to keep them safe, tucked away in this ephemera holder and then secured in this pocket here. So what I did was I just glued down some of the lace to match what, to match what was on the front. And now I'm just removing the clips here to see if it's secure enough to add my ephemera holder. Okay, so I've managed to reload with Fabri-Tac and I feel now that I can just tack down this edge here. to replace a clip on that little bit there. But that's just enough tension there. That's absolutely fine to allow. It's not going to fall out and I can slip that in and out easily. So that's going to live in there. And those flowers aren't going to fall out because there's enough tension on there. Okay, here we are with the folio. And what I'm going to do is secure that down today with the Fabri-Tac. And then I'm going to work on the inside pocket and put my pages in. And also we'll have a look at this one and just want to see what else I can achieve. So this is how we're looking so far. We've got a flip down here. And if I bring this up, you can see that the ephemera holder is now neatly in position there. And I've just glued down some lace that matches what's on the front. So that is now a sliding uh, belly band pocket so that the ephemera holder fits in there nice and snugly, keeping the flowers safe. And then when they fold over, everything is allowed to remain flat under that board there. So the pressed flowers are now kept secure. We've also got a pocket in here as well. So that is lovely. And then these are going to become, what well, this one's going to become a little booklet holder there. I just need to cut down those pages and then something else on the other side. So what I'm going to do is just to make things easier, I'm going to remove the journal and just quickly have a look at all of this. So we need to make this shorter and that's great because there's a bit of a, a wrinkle in that edge so we're going to remove that. I'll just use my ruler here 
and I think it's just measured twice. So if that's the top of it, it's going to sit inside there and like a nice little writing pad. And really, I just want to take off that amount um, a little bit more than that line there. So it just wants to come about that all the way across. I'm not using the lines. I can see where it needs to be. So I'm just using a very basic cutting knife here and we'll just remove that section. This fold out mini note notebook here. In fact, that's great, isn't it? And then you can't see any overhang. So that's where I'm putting that. Um, because it's just two sheets of paper, my idea for this is to sew it in and to strengthen it with some binding, seam binding, or I've got this fabric. It's It came like this, all wrapped up. And I think it's been dyed with avocado. I believe I was sent it in a happy mail and it, and it bound up something and it was beautiful. And I've just run an iron over it and you can see that you get this nice sort of gauze effect there. But it is actually a very pale pink colour and it's really sweet. And I love the fray of that fabric just going to make us feel like this is a very old piece. So using that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it to size, just use some fabric scissors and cut that there. Then I'm just going to get a little bit of stick glue and run that along the edge. And now I want to get in the centre of that fabric. I'll lose a few of the bits and I'm just going to... That's nice. That might be nicer. just going to take that to the sewing machine and I'm going to run a straight stitch down the center and that will tether that bit on. I'm back from the sewing machine and I have stitched through the center there and then on the back you can see the stitching like that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to glue the pages in position so they're not being sewn into the book. It does actually allow for these to be replaced as well but it also gives a very nice effect with this frayed fabric. And run a bead of Fabri-Tac along the centre It's going to hide the crease marks, which are great anyway, because they look like they've been worn and aged. But we won't see it, so it doesn't matter. And then I'm just coming down there with a bit more. I'm running my finger over it. We could use a spreader, which would have been better. And then I'm going to use a spreader to just smooth out that glue. which will allow this to sit in there. And if we just make sure we haven't got anything too... too much of a puddle of glue which would seep through, I think we're okay. So I just want to press that in and check on the other side. 
that that's laying flat and pulling out the fabric as I go. Then we get that lovely effect that sits in there as does this side as well. All the glue is hidden and we can squash everything into position. And so that will fold up and now we have our writing pad to write down all the important little notes or addresses, lists and things that Harriet Bully may have used for her correspondence, so perhaps special birthdays, and then she could have pasted some pictures and things in there, so we could do that. And then over here, I wanted to add some nice paper. I think we'll just audition them up. So I've got this one, but I think it might be a bit too white and shiny, so I'm putting that to one side. This is the page I love, so I think we want that one. And this one, also very beautiful. I like that as well, so maybe we'll have both. Now they fit in there perfectly, so I'm going to I'm going to repeat the process. And just repeating the process here by spreading out that Fabri-Tac glue and then I'm just adding in my sewn in little booklet here. So just one last squash down and then line that up into the crease. We just glue that down and make sure everything is sitting in there nicely. That's it. That's all we do. So it's just some sewing. Doesn't matter if it's straight. It wouldn't have been straight, probably, if it's handmade. And I will just use whatever ink is on here just to add a little bit of an age effect on that edge there and then that is how that's looking all nice and natural and original and old and oldie worldy and then they fold inwards to become this bound folio but before that happens we fold up our ephemera pocket there and then everything gets folded back in and it can settle in. So yes, there's bulk, but it does squash down. And what I had thought, I shan't be doing it, but I will talk you through what I had thought as an optional idea and perhaps one to consider if you were to make an, another journal. So if you've been following along and perhaps you've put a pocket down here already, you could you could do something like this whereby you just reduce the size of it and then you could have a smaller one if you so wished. But um, my other plan would be to... What's my other plan? I've forgotten. Oh, yes. My, so my other plan had been, or another thought was to make this a removable folio so that it somehow either slid in with a bit there or 
it was attached on here with some ties and I think if I were to do that I would have perhaps it would have been better to have planned that ahead of time and built that into the design from from the beginning so because I haven't done that and because I'm quite happy to have the folio as part of the journal because the journal can take that bulk I mean we are chunky but there's plenty of room everything's going to bend round and I will be I'm wanting this with a nice tied closure anyway that I'm, I'm very happy that that sits in there and becomes a fixed piece so that is the next bit to do now I'm going to glue this all down I'm just going to put some tape over the top of these split pins which were to secure the plate on the front so I'm just having it like that Okay, and just because from a point of view, if this were ever to pop off, I would like it to be a nice find. So if the glue does not last the test of time and this falls off, I want it to still appear in keeping with the rest of the journal quality and therefore we are just going to glue this down and then if anyone finds it in the future they can deconstruct it themselves and see that that was vintage packaging which would probably be more interesting. So I'm also going to put in a scruffy label just to say that what year it was French Linen Botanical Journal by Melanie at the treasured page and then that is just a fun find and a little secret date stamp in there. So I'm just adding that like so. OK. So that is a complete piece. It does not need to be stuck down at all. It could be quite happily elsewhere. But we are going to glue it down. So I'm going to glue that side, that side and that side. And we're going to have the side pocket, which you all voted on. Um, I think we all agreed we would have um, it would be easier I think we all agreed it would be easier to get things out of being on the side and it also suggested well if you need a pocket then then have the side one but it doesn't really need a pocket the whole thing could be the whole thing could be secured down and I will still have the option of that if I feel that this is likely to pop off. I could I could just put more glue and stick the pocket down. So we've always got options. Now, let me turn this this way and we can see if this is as straight as I would like it. Okay. That's pretty good. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love that. I'm going to just snip away those bits there. I don't think they add to it. And now I'm able to pin some fabric samples down there and you know there's more scope for decorating. So I think what we need to do here is just pin this whole lot down and really just allow it all to set. I'm just going to take the journal out of it for the moment so that can... OK, well, that's had quite a long time now to just be allowed to set and let the glue do what it needs to do. 
it's still there. <laughs> so that's that's um, that's brilliant. I'm oh, really enjoying this now. This is lovely. It's all coming together. It's got quite a nice weight to it. it feels like a really substantial project, full of interesting things. Which of course it it has got all the interesting things. Um, I love to dip into this and I've I've got a few more page ideas that I want to complete but it's looking really great and then what I'll do is a lovely flip through and then we'll move on to the next one which is is going to be a mini, well not a mini journal, it's going to be an autumn one using the ephemera that we've been making um, on the other playlist. But just while this is all setting up this evening I've just had the idea to to finish it off and I'm not a very lacy person, but this project just seems to want it and um, I think it frames it in nicely. It's a complete optional step that could be rustic and raw and left like that, but the spine of the journal, mm, I don't know, maybe, maybe it wants it, maybe it doesn't, I can't think. And what I'm going to do is cut that bit to size and then I can offer it up a bit more and see what I think. Let's have a look. I think it's a more polished, finished look to have that on on the spine. Um, I think it's a bit special to have all of that on there. Whether I should have come all the way down, let's have another look. I think we'll stick with the original plan um, and so I, I just I like this sort of fabric um, cotton crocheted lace I think it's really beautiful so I'm just putting glue on the heavier heavily embellished heavily I don't know let's just think straight Okay, so the glue has been put there. I think that frames in nicely to be there. We'll come over and we'll just pull that round to there. Okay, so that's how we're looking this evening with everything in here all tying in quite nicely and then just the lovely pages now coming together with lots of interest so we will do a flip through when we're fully finished with it but um, and it, there is an option to put a pen there pen hold but it's you know there's still a way to go there's still a few more pages I don't know that I'm going to be putting too much more bulk in there so it's totally possible to to have a pen holder I'm sort of come trying to think whether a, that would be of interest it would be a stuck on sort of loop that you could put a pen in um, yeah I'm, I may or may not I like the idea that that's going to come around and hug it so the pen could get in the way of that we ha these things you don't know until you see them at the end to see how it finishes up and again I might want to put some tabs in I there I may have an evening where I go mad and put lots of tabs sticking out so who knows but yeah oh my goodness that's just so brilliant so there we go that is where I'm at this evening I've enjoyed that I've put the lace spine on we've got the secured folio there we have a secret hidden pocket I mean you're not going to be able to put loads in there there are lots of comments about what actually would go in there and do you need a pocket? Well, you've, you're forgetting that um, in this era, the Edwardian era, with fountain pen ink, you've got to have somewhere to put your blotting paper, haven't you? 
So, blotting paper could actually live in there. when you've used up your blotting paper what happens when you've got the blobs of ink you're going to need to have extra aren't you so it's a blotting paper so you need to have extra extra blotting papers and then when you're writing to family and they had a huge family. He, he was one of 14. You know, that's enormous. All these birthdays and everybody, all the children, they would have had to have um, remembered them all. Definitely going to want your blotting paper. So that's where that's going to live. And when it gets a bit inky, it doesn't matter because it's hidden and no one will know. So we've thought of everything. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, and just to say that now I have got my very first podcast up on the link below. If you have a look at uh, the link there, you'll find that that takes you to Anchor, where you can have a listen to my pilot episode from the treasured page. And you'll be able to um, follow on 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 the podcast and be able to listen to that so if you don't want to leave the this platform to go and join another platform that's absolutely fine but I will be posting up there uh, weekly and I shall also have um, I'm working towards having a, a similar audio on YouTube but there will be slightly different audio um, and conversation going on on the podcast and that is perhaps for a different different listenership so you could go and have a listen and you'll understand the what the way in which I'm taking that is a more relaxed sort of uh, mindful um, idea and that is because I think it's really nice to listen to a podcast when you're on the go and just be able to still take the craft room with you so hear ideas but be away from your own crafting space and especially if you've got a dog you go for a dog walk or you want to put your um, earphones in you would still be able to listen to the podcast there'll be 20 minute sessions and just having a little listen in to just some creative ideas and uh and I think that uh, that's you know, it's a lovely, lovely thing when it's not visual because we're not all visual people. Some people like to listen and just absorb. Others like to watch and learn. And then some people like to read. Uh, so if I can offer something for everybody, then that's that's what I'd aim to do. Uh, everybody needs a little bit of relaxation. It's fun for me to make and it would hopefully be fun for you to listen in. So have a check out, check it out and uh, see what you think. And obviously the, the channel's developing uh, here on YouTube. We are developing. It's taking some time and that's exactly why I'm here. I'm here to slow down. I'm in no rush, but I am building slowly and I thank you all for your support. It's absolutely wonderful. So if I can bring you any more content in whichever format, um, then, you know, I, I would love for you to enjoy listening in. And if that is something worthwhile for you. And I hope you enjoy listening in and see what what things uh, come out of the podcast, what ideas and uh yeah, it's going to be across lots of different platforms, so you should be able to get it on Spotify and eventually um, Google. Uh, but have a link, uh, have a click on the link, and it will take you to it, and you, you'll be able to work out how best to listen to it. But it's going to go across so a lot of platforms. I've just got to get a few more episodes up, and then they might take me seriously. So thank you all for your continued support. I'm sure we're going to come back with some painting tomorrow on this one and uh, see if we can get a few more pages done. And then we'll push on with the autumn, uh, autumn journal 
and have some fun there with scraps and we'll take us gently into November. So have a listen to the podcast, see what you think. It's just a pilot episode with uh, that's a bonus one and then the first episode will be going up this week as well. So I shall keep you posted and uh, there's alerts coming out now on Kofi with the link for the Kofi in the shop below. Um, I'm working on a digital as well. So there's lots of things happening. And uh, yes, just stay tuned for all of it. And then as I settle into a rhythm of the podcast and the videos and uh, things in the shop, I think I think I'll be up and running and uh, and that would be great. So we'll just see where this whole little journey is going to take me and and you as my subscribers. So thank you everybody for all your support and above everything else guys. Just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye bye now. <laughs>